the high court ruled that children under 16 cannot consent to taking puberty blockers. I was very surprised at the ruling, but I think it was in the right direction. Um, I do think that we need to be very cautious when it comes to allowing children to make decisions that are potentially, un they're going to be with them for life. I mean, in some cases, they'll be facing potential sterility. So uh, I, I feel that the UK is a little bit more ahead of uh, the the logic in this case. Unfortunately, in North America, we are still a bit behind and I'm hoping that we will see uh, what's in front of us because the, it's not. we're not gonna be able to deny the reality of it in a few years when these children start changing their minds and they do start detransitioning. Right. Right, and I think that we're just, it's a, like you said, we're just a matter of, of years away from when children en masse say, hey, you know, you allowed me to take these puberty blockers. I, I don't want to anymore, and now I can't. Like, this is, it, I'm, I have perhaps become sterile for life, and maybe they weren't fully able to consent as, as the Tavistock Clinic case uh, demonstrated. Uh, earlier, we discussed C6. Uh, that is going to be, probably be passed any day now. It's a federal uh, ban on conversion therapy. Uh, which can include certain conversations between parents and children. Uh, people have concerns about this. Parents might be jailed. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? So I, I always want to clarify the difference between conversion therapy for sexual orientation and so-called conversion therapy for gender identity because I'm not in favor of conversion therapy for sexual orientation because sexual orientation is immutable. So if someone is gay or bisexual, that cannot be changed. And so therapies to change to try and change that are not going to be effective. Something like what well, they call, so this is what activist groups have been very smart in their marketing and they've lumped sexual orientation and gender identity as one and the same. So although they are related, they are not the same thing. So a child, as we mentioned earlier, we spoke about this earlier, a child who identifies as the opposite sex, they can change how they feel about that as they get older because they're still developing. And so it's not appropriate to say that if a child feels this way, that there, there should be, it should be off the table for a clinician to question that in therapy. So the way the activists have framed it is that like sexual orientation, gender identity is the same thing. So if, if a child feels a certain way, that's never going to change and they have to just be supported in that. When in fact, I would argue, and I think my, my colleagues who are clinicians would agree with me that you have to be able to question a child about their gender identity to determine what else is going on in their life because in many cases their gender dysphoria may be explained by something else and maybe due to comorbidity mm -hmm. there's a strong research literature showing that there is an association between gender dysphoria and autism right. which is a factor that needs to be taken into account um, in, in a lot of cases, it has to do with the family dynamic as well. So it's not an issue that should be seen in isolation. And so if if clinicians potentially face prison time for doing their job properly, no one is going to do that. No one is going to take the risk. And I already see so many people leaving the field because they are not willing to do that because they feel it's unethical. Right, right. And sadly, in Ontario, where I live, and you will recall this, uh, Bill 77, back in, I believe it was 2015, sort of achieved the same kind of thing as C6, except not jailing parents, but parents can only kind of pursue one path of therapy for their gender dysphoric child. And uh, we've seen some concerns over that uh, here in Ontario. Uh, in the 45 seconds we have left, I know, I've heard the statistic mentioned before, and I don't know if you have it handy, but Apparently, many there's been a spike in children who are transgendered uh, or claiming to be transgendered or, or gender dysphoric. I've heard it said that a lot of these children are simply uh, gay and maybe they uh, it's a sexual orientation question they have. So in the 30 seconds I have left, what are your thoughts on that? Absolutely. Yeah. So the kids who desist, they're more likely to grow up to be gay in adulthood, not be transgender. As I said, there is a huge link between gender dysphoria and gender nonconformity and later growing up to be gay in adulthood. And this is something that activists will say that this is outdated or that um, it's not accurate. They will just try to uh, claim that it's, it's not credible, right. but it is. And I mean, anyone in the field knows that. And so actually this, the new approach of, of affirming children to live as the opposite sex, I would say is actually a new form of conversion therapy because it's taking gay children and when they grow up, they're going to appear to be straight if they're living as the opposite sex and same sex attracted. Okay, well, thanks for coming on today. And if people want to get your book, where can they get it? Uh, you can go to my website, which is drdebrasso.com. I have all the links there. My audiobook is read by me and you can actually get it for free on Audible. Um, it's been very popular. I've been getting some really good feedback from it. So it's great.